So I glued on the sheep's head here and from talking to a few people online you've got to be careful that this is actually lined up and now mine is pretty straight I'm quite pleased with that and I guess that's just pure fluke because I never checked it before I tried to make sure everything was accurate as accurate as I could but if you might remember I didn't put this piece and this piece in and I'm glad I didn't because I fitted them now um, and they, they've gone in a lot easier I had to very gently file the edge of this hole here and I had to very gently file the edges of this this piece here to make this fit because this pushes in and as my build goes on I'm becoming increasingly concerned at how fragile this wood is and I know it's not that fragile but when you're pushing one piece of wood into another it can easily pry it open and split something so what I did was I gently sanded the edges of this piece to make sure that it didn't split anything open now this is all all square but if you look down there it doesn't look square in here and I've got no idea why that is because everything else seems to match up and it all seems straight if I look at it it's just this mating piece appears to have not gone in as straight as it could but it's it's flush in so there will be I guess some minor minor I, I'm no expert at this. this is my first woodwork project so I think that will be okay I guess I, we'll, we'll find out but it seems all right it seems in let that dry then we'll move on to the next bit I thought this bearing was going to be a real pain but actually it's been quite easy so you glue the two bits of wood together and then what you have here is the bearing holder which is 3D printed the bearing gently pushes in there like that now I had to trim the edges of this because there were some swarfy bits on there then it fits in there like that and it does fit absolutely perfectly so I've obviously glued that about right and I've filed it down. It fits really flush really well and you use two of these little screws and screw it in. That was actually quite easy, that front bearing. I thought that was going to be very difficult but hey, live and learn. So actually I found that pretty stressful although I think it's gone pretty well. So you can see the front bearing is installed and glued in, the body support is in, the rear support is in and hopefully that's the right way around with the, tr with the square where the crank will go through. This all went in nicely, so I spent quite a long time actually um, sanding these bits to make them big enough, sanding these to make sure this was the right size, and little bits of sanding. So what I did was I test fitted this bit, this bit, and this bit to the to the bottom and the top, to the to the bottom and the top, and then I tried each piece to make sure each one would fit, and then I put them on together. My mates loaned me some squeeze clamps. There's a squeeze clamp, and I've one at the back. And I've got some pegs here. I know Jap used pegs quite a lot when he built his. So you can see I've got some pegs there. And a normal G clamp there. Seems all right. Looks fairly square. But again, I spent a really long time making sure that each one fitted into each piece before trying to fit all of them. Because you're in this situation where you've got glue on all of this, glue on all of this, glue on all of this. And my wood glue, I mean, the temperature here must be, what, almost 20 odd degrees we've got the heating on indoors and my glue seems to dry really quick and it seems to grab quick as well so I've got literally a few minutes once it goes on to, to to get it in the right position and I really think I have it seems to be pretty much right these squeeze clamps are a little bit they're a little bit clumsy so maybe hopefully I haven't done it too tight there but I want it nice and tight to squeeze it all together and I found that these ends were lifting up so this just lifted so I put these bulldog clips on here and it's pulled it down beautifully so that should all be together and I've just got a little bit of weight on top there just to hold the uh, the bearing support and the other bit in so it's all in and it actually to be fair looks quite reasonable I can't argue with that but yeah sand everything test fit everything and just be really careful because these these edges splinter so easily as I'm finding out but then Maybe I'm a little bit clumsy because I don't work with wood or certainly not ply very often, but I think that's reasonable and it's lining up reasonably and everything seemed to be fairly square. Well, that was stressful. Wow. Okay, so I'm attaching the first of the sides. There's the sides. Um, unfortunately, this side has a little bit of damage on it, so it has to be that side, so I have to use this side facing, but you, you can't use both nice sides. But I guess on mine, the nice side will be facing other people. You'll see that when you come to build yours. Anyway, what I did was I test fitted this piece onto the headstock first and got it to fit. It needed a little bit of sanding and fettling as always. 
and then I did it in bits. I did about that much, then that much, and you can see how much I've done from the clamps. So, some of it is really nice and flush, some of it is not quite as flush, so there's a good millimetre there. So despite my best efforts, I couldn't get it completely flush all the way around. It doesn't look horrible. It doesn't look horrible. If you look at it, you can't really tell. It's a little bit there, but I think that's just how it is. You know, I need to clean up that little bit of glue there, but... So, test fit this piece then do it slowly in bits and you can never have enough clamps. So I ran out of clamps, so I've got two, three squeeze clamps and a couple of these G clamps and oh, that's it, I've run out. I use these bulldog clips on here and I had to pinch the bulldog clip that was here and use it here because you need to glue this piece to this wooden bit here at the back. And I've used these pegs to force this bit down because you can't put a bulldog clip here because this this is this is a solid piece here, so you can't get the clip around it. So I've tried to wedge it down with the pegs. I guess only time will tell how well that works. So yeah, that's that's the best I can do. I'm not I'm certainly no luthier, um, but it should hold together. There should be enough glue in there. I guess I guess we'll have to suck it and see see what happens. So we're now on side two of gluing the sides on and this is the side that will face people and I'm assuming it's part of the design that this is actually a nicer side fair enough uh, so I glued it on the same as the other one I had to do a little bit of sanding around these parts to actually get the right the right fit and I fitted this I glued it and then glue it in sections and clamp it but the thing is this side was much more difficult to get in I had to use these clamps to pull it down uh, because when I tried to squash it together it pushed it out so I only had these clamps that were big enough to go around this part of the neck. I don't have any clamps big enough to go around here. So I've had to use the clamps very close together and squeeze it in. And you can see I've actually deformed slightly the wood here. But I think once I let go, it should spring back into shape. But I'd rather have it clamped in and possibly a little bit deformed. Um, this has gone in fairly flush. There's a little bit sticking up, uh, sticking out a little bit. But it's basically glued in along that length. Um, I've done I've done my best, that's all I can do. Um, and this bit here is clamped in at the end and bulldog clipped there, which seemed to work for the other side. It seemed to hold it pretty well. So hopefully it will work for this side. So that's the other side in. So th this is not the best, not, not the best result, but it's not that bad. There's no horrible edges here. Um, this is all fairly flush. Look, this is all reasonably fitted, fitted together. There's no massive gaps or problems. Um, I think that's about as good as we're going to get. So yeah, another slightly stressful job, but hey, it is it is what it is. Let's see what we can do. There we go. So here we are in the log cabin about to colour the nerdy gurdy. Um, I'm going for a lurid purple. Why not? I mean, I'm going to be hopefully playing rock on this rather than medieval stuff, but hey, that's even if I can get it working. The whole wheel thing's a bit scary, but anyway, so this, that's the key chest thing, the crank, these little bits, I've put some tape around the edge of the wheel, I'm not going to, I'm just going to do the edges of the wheel, um, yeah, I'll, that's, there it is, I need to sort of dye it in here, it's probably going to take a couple of coats, I might end up using most of this bottle, I think, to give this a couple of good coats, but this stuff was recommended to me by a guy on the on the Facebook page and I independently found this on eBay at the same time so yeah it's it's uh, it's a I think it's a British British company but it's made in Poland so it's an EU product so at least it's not come from China so yeah I'll um I'll get this painted mm -hmm. and I think it's gonna take a couple of them and there we go ooh well that came out really good please with that I was not expecting that kind of deep purple I practiced on a load of blanks indoors and I'll, I'll find them and they didn't come out as nice as that on the bits I tested on. That's really come out lovely. Bearing in mind that the, the nerdy gurdy is deliberately made from a cheap resource which is plywood, fairly thin plywood, is it what, 3 mil, 5 mil, whatever it is, 3 mil plywood. It, I'm really impressed. So my plan was to purple burst it, to have the black on the edges, 
And I, I still think I want to do that, but I've just got to be a bit careful because I don't want to ruin what I've done because that purple looks pretty good. But I think it looked better as a purple burst. There's a number of ways of doing that. I can use the black, black dye around the edge, but that didn't work so well on my options. But I've seen if you use this, this is an acrylic water-based paint, so when it's dry, you put a template over the centre and you spray around and it will give the purple burst. That's how guys generally do it on guitars. That's how the two ways you do it on a guitar. So, hmm, there's some interesting, interesting choices here. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to go with. Yeah, I've just noticed that I've missed around the sound holes a little bit. That needs to be retouched. But hey, it might need two coats. So I'm actually really pleased with that. That's that's looking good. There's all the all the other bits up there as well. Look. Yeah. So these are the blanks that I was talking about that I've been testing on. So this is like a piece of spare joist from my house. And I've done a bit of black there and purple there and two coats of purple there. And it looks very washed out. I thought that's strange. So I then got a piece of rough sawn timber. And I did the same thing with the black and the purple. And it looked a bit different. But then I actually got a piece of the hurdy-gurdy surround and painted it on there. And it did look much better. And I thought, oh, what I need to do is really test on a piece of plywood. So I found myself some plywood, it's slightly thicker, but it, oddly, this plywood, well, not oddly, it's obvious, isn't it? This plywood reacted very similar to this one. So that's a good thing. So this was a worthy test doing. And I've also tried the black ink on the edge to have a look at my, my sort of sun, my, my black, my purple burst. And this is too much of a degradation. It's too much of a, a difference between the two. So I need to sort that out. I also looked at online... There's a way of tiger stripe in the wood when you, there's two ways of doing it. You either wrap string around it and hit it with a spray can. I've done this one a bit too heavy. Or you use wire and it gives a sort of flamed grain. But I'm not really happy with that finish. I also did it with a, with a blowtorch. I don't really want a blowtorch to top of my gurdy, especially because I've used water-based wood. So maybe those effects I might leave out because this grain has turned up so much nicer than I was expecting. I'm really pleased with that grain. I'm, nobody was expecting that. So I might just leave the natural grain showing through. But I need to have a practice at black at doing the purple burst around the edge, but without doing it on the live instrument. I might try on the bottom of this. No, the bottom is this piece. This is the bottom facing me. <laughs> Get that right. This is the bottom of the key chest cover. If I test on there and it goes wrong, I've not really lost anything, but I've also sort of proved the point. And then if, if so, I can purple burst around the edges of this. So, yeah, there we go. That was the testing I did on the blanks. And then there she is. Oh dear, so that all went badly wrong. So what I did was I dyed it purple and it was looking brilliant. I think I took some shots of that. I then put my burst template on top. And then I sprayed the spray around the edge of the burst template and it looked awesome. The problem was I'd left some old glue on some of these edges, so you had these lumps of glue showing through that you couldn't see before. Um, it's my own fault, I'm inexperienced with uh, with wood glue and I wasn't aware that it would leave this kind of shiny finish, so I've had to re-sand the whole lot. And um, I mean, I know some people might like this kind of distressed finish, but that's not really for me. So what I'm now going to have to do is kind of start again, which is frustrating, but hopefully this time we should be alright. Hopefully I've got enough of the wood stain in there. So hopefully there's about half left, so I should be able to run it over and restain it, then reburst it. Have I got enough spray? Yeah, hopefully I've got enough spray, so I can restain, reburst, and start again. Um, these bits didn't have any glue splattered on them, so I'm happy with the burst on there. That looks all right. We'll get away with those. But yeah, I have to redo the actual uh, the body itself. Bugger. So I'm not sure if I'm going to cover the finish that I did on this. It didn't quite come out as I wanted. It came out very, very dark. The plan was it would be a purple burst into black, black, purple burst, black. And it kind of has come out, but it's very dark. Oh, I, don't know if, I don't even know if the camera can pick up the purple colour, but yeah. I, I kind of wish I just brought a pot, pot of varnish and did it now. But anyway, onwards. So the next steps are trying to fit these these kind of key things. Now... They don't fit at all, basically, is the, is the simple answer. So I did mask off this. So I made sure that there was no paint or varnish or anything getting into there. But none of these really fit. Some of them fit half in, like some of these. But most of them generally, if I try and slightly push one in. I'll focus on the right thing. I'll try and push it in. It'll go in there, but it definitely won't go in the other side because it's 
definitely the wrong size. So I now have to work out how best to file them. I've got a small file here somewhere. So should I file these holes or file these edges, maybe sand down these edges, but they're quite far out. So I think file these and then possibly look at sanding these down afterwards. You've got to be extremely careful because you can see some of these holes in here. If you look at the the, diff, the gap in between those two holes, sorry, it won't focus, it just focuses on my hand. But here, this is very, very thin and it's easy to break. So these don't even fit in at all. So I'm going to have to be very, very careful when I do these. Um, that one goes into there. But I don't think it will go much through that hole. It will get stuck there. So yeah, quite a lot of work to do now sanding those down. I've done the bridge. You can see the bridge is there. That fits really nicely and goes in. I need to probably stain the bridge as well and I'll probably just stain the edge of these keys rather than the whole thing. Um, yeah, so there we are. Quite a lot of work still to do. Um, not quite happy with the finish.